In this video I'm demonstrating how to perform uh, repeated measures ANOVA in the JMP software. Uh, I performed this study on uh, breast cancer, cancer uh, samples. Uh, There's a pre-test, uh, pre-surgery uh, treatment with a drug. Uh, so there was a biopsy taken at that time and um, uh, we uh, ran simulations on the transcriptome from that. And then there was uh, a post-surgical uh, biopsy taken when they removed the, uh, the lump. Uh, and they were split into later responders and non-responders. So uh, what I want to do is try to recreate this here um, according to the way that I had done it before and it was successful to do a what ends up becoming a, a two-way uh, analysis of variants uh, actually and uh, let me demonstrate that to you now. <clears throat> So uh, using the instructions for the univariate approach, uh, I have a slight variation on it that uh, would work, but here's the, the table in uh, jump, or jump, jump, I guess it is. Uh, and we have the responders, non-responders identified here, pre and post, and then they're numbered one to 10, 10 pre in our two categories, five each, and then uh, repeated samples uh, post uh, on the uh, the same individuals. Um, this time here we're ignoring. I shouldn't have that column in there. And all the rest are about 500 uh, species levels from the simulation. So uh, we have our columns identified over here. Um, and these are some scripts saved and results that I, I ran on this before. Okay, so it says uh, choose the fit model under analyze on the menu. So analyze fit model. Let me pull this over here. And the first thing we're going to do is they did here, they only put one of their dependent variables in the Y. I'm going to put all of those 500. Okay, got to click it just right to be able to select them all. Okay, put those in the Y. So that's what's nice about uh, the jump is it'll do the analyses on all these at the same time simultaneously. Okay, now we're going to go over here and switch down to these instructions. So uh, drug in our case is the R and R. So drug, and then click Add down here. So we did the first one. Now ID uh, is the number, the one to ten, repeated twice, but still. Okay, and add, and then drug in the variable list. Drug is R and R, and the number here. Okay, so we're going to take action on both of these, and then we are going to nest. Okay, while that is still selected in blue, we're now going to do this part here, which we come down here to attributes the attributes pop-up menu. It's actually a pull-down menu, but that's okay. And then random. Okay, so we now have generated that and you can see it up here. <clears throat> now with uh, uh, next we're going to select time, which is the pre-post in our study. And add is shown here. Now uh, with the number uh, and, and random, this line here selected in blue. We're going to continue and we're going to select drug up here. Again, drug is the uh, R and R and time. So I'm pressing the shift button to select both of these and then cross. Okay, so we have recreated what I had before, which is in the Word document here as you can see. So those were the steps to get to that point. And then we run it. And so it's running the two-way ANOVAs as it turns out to be on all 500 of those. And doesn't take very long. And here's the results table. So you can see uh, the uh, species or the, the uh, 
molecular uh, complex labeled here as a response. We see our typical two-way NOVA results table with the interaction, the effect of drug, the R&R, and, R, and uh, the ref effect of time, or the pre versus post. And then here's the probability that we would look at. Uh, what I'm going to do is scroll down to the F's. D, E. There was a fast L in here. FAD, FAD, fast receptor. Okay, so here we see one. The uh, interaction is not significant, but the pre versus post, which is really what I'm uh, interested in, I want to find a biomarker that will uh, separate pre versus post. And maybe that's actually wrong. I actually want one that's going to separate responder from non-responder. But anyway, uh, this one we can see does that. Uh, and then we see when that happens, we have a positive uh, uh, F uh, down here, uh, where the difference between the two is significant. Uh, so the ideal uh, biomarker would be one that has a significant difference between the uh, responders and non-responders, since we want to uh, bio marker that's going to predict the between these two, right? So uh, what I've done, uh, you can go to the fat cross here, or whatever they call it, and you can click on these and uh, copy, and then I've pasted those into a Word document. So use, as you see here. Uh, so here's one uh, just below that, I guess, fast cell, fast receptor, trimer, fad, procaspase 10. Uh, this, although it's not really highly significant because we're doing so many multiple comparisons, uh, it's a candidate biomarker on the thinnest of margins, I guess. Uh, and it's responder versus non-responder significant here as well. So uh, that's how we perform a... Uh, two-way ANOVA or a univariate with repeated measures uh, and the repeated measures is uh, uh, the second factor and screen you know through all of these scrolling down looking for them a uh, lot of uh, significant interactions oh there's another one I think that's one we just looked at <clears throat> okay uh, and then we continue on through here with the remainder of the uh, biomarkers uh, testing uh, using the uh, signal detection method.